<laughs> That's right. You're seeing this correctly. Halloween. The Big Bloody Mike mod. Now with Pinavent V2 support. PhysX Physics. Fleet Mechanical Sounds. Table Enhancements. Updated Lighting. And lots more. Yep, it's finally out, guys. Or at least I finally got it done. Uh, you know, a lot of people have been asking for this for quite a while. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, what, what, what can I say? It's finally here. Uh, I, I, ironically, I was, I was hoping a year ago to have Silent Hill done for Halloween. And for those who didn't know, I suffered a stroke last year, which threw everything way off. It really messed me up for a long time. I'm still recovering from it. I'm still waiting for heart surgery as a result of it. Uh, so as a result of that, I had to take a step away from working on Silent Hill and uh, decided to do smaller table updates that didn't require me to be doing anything at my pinball cabinet. Uh, so I decided that I was going to update Pen Event to newer things that, you know, I wanted to do anyway and uh, then get all the previously released tables that had Pen Event on them updated to the new standard, which was also including the new fleet mechanical sounds, uh, the newer pup pack standards, uh, but also doing table updates at the same time because I've learned quite a bit in the past few years. So, you know, I figured I might as well just update them the way I've always wanted to for my own personal preference, you know, for the lighting inserts, uh, shadows, shadow maps, raycast shadows, uh, you know, and various other things and also my own fun additions, you know, just fun things I've always wanted to add, you know, so this particular table uh, I already did uh, the pen event release a couple of, well here a little history slam tilt worked on this table it started in 2017 and actually released the only public version in 2019 uh, a year later I did the big bloody mic mod for it which is a bunch of fun additions that I'm going to show you in this table uh, you can also look at my older YouTube video that shows me running into a wall in VR like a mad fool uh, but yeah so uh, this is not Slam Tilt's newest version of this table. This is an update to my pre my previous release, Big Bloody Mike mod, to his older version of the table. So uh, you know it's not going to have his newest, latest uh, uh, additions to the tables that he's added ever since. You know uh, this is the Big Bloody Mike mod. Uh, so just to clarify that for because it's going to look a little different than his newest version. You know uh, Slam. Uh, I don't know if he'll ever release any tables ever again, or if he'll release the newest update. Uh, and any updates I do, he's not going to maintain those updates, you know, and because he doesn't have a cabinet, he doesn't understand how the code works or how to test any of it, you know, and he, and he doesn't normally update mods to his tables anyway. So once I got to a realization that, well, okay, you know, since that's the case, I'm just going to add my own fun updates to these tables, you know, things I've always wanted to do myself, uh, and then, you know, add my own preferences for everything for the lighting for all that good stuff so uh that's what this video is going to be about is basically kind of just just like the jaws when i just did uh talking a little bit about uh some of the updates and then going through the game mode so that you guys understand how to well kind of complete the game you can actually complete there's not a final wizard mode but you can go through and finish all the modes that's part of what i did uh in the updates was to complete some of the modes that weren't quite complete and then make it so at least it's a you know a uh, a game you can get through all the modes on uh, so all right so now that I've uh, you know yabbered about all that stuff long enough uh, let's go through and talk about some of the uh, updates so for me I personally like to update the lighting and post processing and all that good stuff the way I like it so just to give you an idea all right so if you go into the normal settings of what you know BAM and you know is set up and how most people do their tables this is how the post-processing is normally set up is like that all right now understand i've made adjustments to the table to reflect that you know so that the lighting can look and for me the way i like more realistically and other things so you know post-processing for me starts here and if you do that everything in the table has to be completely adjusted and uh for the brightness for other things so that it all matches up just nicely so that's my first step is to do that uh, and then I uh, go into the lights and then uh, this is a uh, normally you know what uh, what is used for what I typically like to use 
uh, this is Future Pinball's default. <laughs> so you can see how, again, it w none of that would match up, you know. But if you want to have more realistic uh, lighting, I tend to start with dark and then move up to around 350, specular, and right there. And then I adjust the entire table from that point on. Trust me, it would not look like this normally. It would look completely dark. You wouldn't see any of the lights at all. You wouldn't see much of anything whatsoever. So that, that's my starting point for most of that. Uh, the other thing I like to do is, uh, now some people like to uh, put like little, like if you look at, you know, the, the bulbs, the GI bulbs, right? They have a glow effect to them. Some people, and Slam and others I've seen on Visual Pinball and Future Pinball, they like to put a, a extra, and I've done it too, actually, in the past. Uh, put a, sort of like a little uh, glow effect from another bulb that hovers above the plastics, uh, you know, to try to give it that, you know, lit up glowing look. I prefer to actually uh, remove all those and update the texture itself. So I took the, the plain... Uh, texture of all the plastics with no changes whatsoever and then I like to you know uh, add the shading and the lighting to it to make it look like it's turned on and then switch the textures back and forth so when the GI is on it'll look like this when the GI is off it switches back to the normal plain Jane texture you know and I, that's how I personally prefer to do it you know but you have to again you have to update the the original image and you have to get, modify the rest of the table to make it all match up and look really nice now the other thing I really love doing is adding mesh inserts. Now what do I mean by mesh inserts? I mean like, uh, well as an example, here's an example of inserts that, or lights that are not meshes. So, see the pumpkin lights there? And the police light. So what that is, is those are basically images from the playfield texture. Uh, and then in Future Pinball and Visual Pinball, uh, you can uh, basically create uh, shaped lights around the images and then what they'll do is they'll just brighten darken that area of the playfield texture to act as a light. But what I, I like to do is I like to put actual uh, mesh inserts in there. And uh, you can see, like, these are like 3D objects that are actually recessed inside the playfield. And then you add really beautiful insert images. And for me, I use Schlabber 34's gorgeous inserts. He, he has these uh, nice set of pre-rendered inserts. And I... Uh, UV map those to custom made uh, 3D insert models, which have to be sized perfectly to whatever the table uses. They, they you know, they don't just automatically match up because the, they're not always used with realistic sizes. So you have to do that, and you have to make sure it all matches up because you can't just plop it on the table and then uh, future, tell future pinball, hey, make this 3D model bigger. Unfortunately, uh, future pinball, visual pinball are kind of ancient in that respect. Uh, they don't allow you to do things like that. Uh, BAM lets you do that with models, but you can't do lighting. You have to use future pinball models for stuff like lighting. So, you know, so I can't use BAM for that portion, unfortunately. But what I can do, and oh, the other thing you notice is uh, you have uh, decals on top uh, that, you know, give it that more 3D look. And it looks really, really nice. Like, I don't know. I just, it's a, it's a night and day difference. When you have all this stuff set up, it's gorgeous. So I'll show you the other thing I do is I add also a normal maps. So what I mean by normal maps is uh, bump maps. So a bump map or a normal map is a way of taking a flat image and making it so that it looks like it's three dimensional. And all the, if you like Future Pinball has that real dynamic lighting. So all the real dynamic lights that are on the table will actually show up on those bump maps and reflect appropriately and it looks so much better so as you can see i have uh, i added a red light to the drain i've been doing that for a lot of tables now i think it just accents and makes it look a lot nicer and uh so you can see the red light from the drain being reflected on the inserts but you can also see uh the the, the global light the main light which is up there somewhere it just doesn't have a, a visible model or anything uh and then you can also see any of the real dynamic uh, gi lights on the table so if I was to turn off uh, the uh, normal maps, this is how they would normally look. So if you don't make normal maps, which which I do, I, I make normal maps for all, all, all of this stuff. Uh, if you don't do that, then this is how they would look. Uh, let's go here. So at BAM, you can adjust all these things and more, actually. You can adjust the, the, the color, the brightness, uh, the normal maps, the specularity, all sorts of things in real time dynamically 
you know, it's, it's just awesome, like some of the stuff you can do with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the rectangle. So if you go to there and you take off the normal map, here's how it would actually look. That's a huge difference. <laughs> like, see how much of a difference that makes? It's like night and day, you know? So it's like, wow. Like, so once I discovered the beauty of normal maps uh, uh, through BAM, it's like, yeah, you can't go back, man. You just can't go back. You got to have that. And look at that. Look at the difference that makes, man. So just something small like that, you don't realize it, how much of a difference it makes until you don't have it. You know, and then when it's all recessed in and all that, especially in VR, oh, man, this looks so, so much better. So, yeah, those are, and you know, I, I did that all around, too. I, I did that for all the inserts, you know, went around, did it for all of them up here, except for, like, the, the image ones, like the bullet ones, you know, it's kind of a little unrealistic to try and do it for that, you know. So it just makes such a huge difference. Like, I love adding that to tables now. I just, I can't not add that to tables now, you know. It just looks so sharp. Uh, and what else to talk about here? Uh, so some of the other things uh, I've done for the table. Uh, added uh, these spotlights here to the slings. Uh, these are animated spotlights, which will rotate and uh, project onto Michael Myers around the play field when he's trying to stalk you, when you're trying to save the team, for example, in, uh, in that mode, and I'll show that later on. Uh, and uh, got a couple up here as well. Uh, you know, to light up the upper play field more. I think Slam actually added some to the actual direct upper play field itself as well. Uh, you know, but uh, yeah, I just, you know, I, I, I like spotlights. And especially if you can use real spotlights, it just, it can really look, like when I say real spotlights, I mean like a real projected full 3D, you know, spotlight, you know, not just a flat texture or anything like that. Uh, you know, it just looks so much nicer. So that's, that's a lot of the lighting enhancements I, I've, added on the table and changes uh, uh, so what else will we talk about here so you can also see the the pup DMD uh, features I added uh, for the pup pack for pin event uh, if you enable it and you have pup stream enabled then it will show the pup pack in the game which you'll see on the back glass there you'll see it in the upper left of the HUD you can also have it on the play field here and you can also have it on the apron you don't have to have all those on you can you know in pin event let's see, uh, choose exactly what you want to have but that's what i liked having it on so uh to me that's that's, that's, that's a bigger uh a, a really cool thing I, I guess i should say uh and i also added an option to change the ball which i'll you know uh, you'll see the difference i i added a pumpkin ball you know and I, I don't know I, I like adding options like that you know you can have the normal chrome ball or you can have the pumpkin ball you can switch that back and forth uh while you're in a track mode, or you could set it uh, in the table script permanently, so that way it's always your favorite when when the table starts. Uh, what else we got here? So we got oh yeah, we got Mr. Uh, Big Bloody Mike. How can I? Oh yeah, well first of all you got this pumpkin up there. That used to be to the side of the table. I decided to make it a topper instead. And then of course we got Big Bloody Mike here, who you know in a track mode. If you watch my older video, you'll see me playing this in VR and then walking around like a, a buffoon, you know. And then you can see Michael, well, he'll follow you. <laughs> you know, like, he'll just follow you wherever you go. So in VR, it's kind of neat. You know, it's kind of creepy, but it's kind of neat. You know, so that's something else I added. And then, then you'll see him pop up on the table and in the VR game room at different moments, depending on what's going on. Uh, so, so yeah, those are some of the bigger things. Uh, and then, of course, I mentioned fleet sounds. You're going to hear those. So I guess now I've done, you know, now I've gone through some of the, some of the updates uh there's other stuff that i can't show you till i play it uh but yeah we'll just go through and uh talk, do some of the game modes and whatnot Death has come to your little town, you can either all right you can help me to stop so this this table has a a raised upper play field uh so when you launch the ball it's going to always launch it to that upper play field so i'm going to use the ball controller for a lot here guys so this is not going to be a fancy playthrough if that's what you came for Wrong video, <laughs> you know, I'm going to go through the modes so that you guys will understand how to play through the game, complete the modes, and then, you know, enjoy it a lot more when you actually know how to play the game. So, here we go. So, you launch her. Oh, and I stuck there. That was pretty bad. So, normally, you'd want to keep it up top there to try to get your skill shots. 
And that's actually one of the thing, uh, the modes you can complete. So I'm just going to try playing around a bit. All right, so we're already in our first mode here. So whenever it goes into the upper play field, the one nice thing about, ah, geez, about Future Pinball is that uh, you can change the, the, the camera view dynamically if you want. And I, I made that as an option. Uh, you know, uh, you don't have to have it change if you don't want to. Uh, you just change that in the table script. But yeah, I, I just, uh, you know, and I saw that Slam did the same thing actually as well. Uh, that, you know, it, changing it so that, you know, you could do that either for this mode or for multi-ball modes. And, oh, yeah, now, of course, you take a look at the ball there. There's a, the pumpkin ball. You know, I basically uh, found some uh, pumpkin, uh, pumpkin textures and then created a normal map from it. And and I failed that mode and I sucked. So, yeah, I was just trying to show, you know, the, the differences of uh, being up top. So, let's turn on our wonderful ball roller. So... We'll go around the table. We'll talk about a few things. So on the side here, you have the teen drop targets. If you hit all four of those, then this light here will light up saying uh, the teen is selected. That means that you're ready to go into the teen mode once you hit all these kill targets on the right here. But you have to do the teen targets first, just like this, as you've as seen here. Okay. Uh, and oh, I think I the MD got messed up a little bit there. And uh, there we go. So once you hit all four of those, the team target or team selected light lights up. So then you're gonna have to hit all the kill targets uh, to enter that mode and to try to save the team, basically. Uh, if you want to enter any other mode, uh, what you're gonna have to do is you have to hit the buffer here to light one it, and then the other. It doesn't matter which one. And then they're gonna start this alternating lighting sequence. And then now you see this uh, center uh, pointer is lighting up. That means that you have to go through that center to get to the upper play field and that will start a mode. But you only, as you see, have a limited amount of time to do that, right? Uh, you also have these uh, pumpkin targets. You hit those, they light up, and then you notice the orbits lit up. So then, you know, if you go through here, you'll either get a trick or a treat, you know? So it's either gonna be a bonus or, uh, which is a tree of some sort, or if you get tricked, then you don't get anything, right? Uh, if you hit all these uh, orbits over and over and over again, then you're going to eventually light up Haddonfield. And that's one of these lights down here uh, that you can uh, do the clear to try to clear the game, basically. So you have the stop it mode, the chase. You have why won't they die? That's basically getting enough skill shots in the upper play field when you launch a ball. Uh, then you have uh, Boogeyman. And save Lori, which is uh, you have to save Lori in the, the kill team or save the team mode. And then you have Haddonfield, which is making enough orbit shots. If you do all those, then you basically have cleared the game. And if you have the pup pack running, you you see the end of Halloween 2, where Michael Myers is all burnt up. And you know, and I'll show you show you that uh, in this video. So all right, so I'm gonna go through each of the modes now. So we have teen selected here. So let me just switch back here. So now once you hit all the uh, targets here, uh, once you do that, you're gonna see Michael Myers a pop or pop up randomly on the play field. That's uh, part of the Big Bloody Mike mod. And uh, the, the spotlights are gonna rotate to highlight wherever he's at, you know? And then w you only have a limited amount of time. You have to hit one of uh, the uh, indicators or targets that shows up. It's random, it's gonna be different every time. If you do that in time, then you save the team. So we'll just show you here. Michael Myers has come home to kill. So there you go. You can see Michael popping up all over the place. But if you don't save them in time. Oh God, hurry. A lot of other kids are gonna be slaughtered And there you go, poor Annie. She didn't make it, man. You know, poor Annie. <laughs> so if you do it again, now your next victim is Bob. So then you go through uh, and do it again. Michael Myers has come home to kill. And then if you actually make it, there you go. So I'm actually going to show this now from a little bit of a different point of view. So anything you like. <laughs> so if you go through the same thing, you're going to see Michael Myers has come home that Michael's not just on the playfield. But he'll also show up in the VR room. Hurry! A lot of other kids are gonna 
the slaughter tonight. So we'll go through again. This time we'll actually try to save them. And there you go. All right. So I'm gonna go through one more time. So you have to save Lori, basically, uh, to clear that mode. Uh, the other ones don't have an effect, but you have to save Lori. So don't mess that one up. So if you go through. Now in this case, we have to do the orbit. And there we go, we saved Lori, and now you can see the mode's been lit up. All right, so now let's just try doing some of the normal modes here. So to do that, I'll try try playing normally. <laughs> So you notice I got the one side there. Oh, I missed it. Yeah, it's not always easy. All right, I'm, I'm cheating, sorry. I don't want this video to be forever. <laughs> so we're gonna hit both, right? So you have a limited amount of time. There we go. Now for this mode, for the chase, again, I'm gonna cheat. Uh, you have a limited amount of time to hit all the targets up here, all of them. So that means you gotta hit the micro targets. But you also have to hit the Loomis targets. So now, once you've done that, it says start chase. Go through down here. Now you're in the next phase of this mode. So I changed it so that uh, I added a, a flashlight ball to the ball, you know, to make it like a, a flashlight ball and, and darken up the play field. Cause I, I, don't, I thought that was really cool, you know? All right, so to clear this mode, you're gonna have to do a bunch of orbit shots. All right, so, yeah, I don't, know. I'm gonna cheat. I don't care, you know? All right, so once you've done enough of those shots, then you have to make yourself back up to the top of the play field. And now you're gonna see Michael's gonna appear in front of whatever drop target you have to hit. So you have to hit that in time to clear the mode, and if you do, there you go, you cleared the mode. There you go, you can see the chase has been completed. So you'll notice if you try going in there, with uh, it's not lit up, it's just going to loop you around. Ah! There you go, alright. Yeah, those bumpers are, are killer, man. Like, you know, bumpers in the middle of a play field like that are just death sentence you know as, as others have said before you know all right so when you launch the ball and you're up here you keep the ball up here but you only have so many shots to do it and you'll run out of uh shots it's like shooting with a gun right and see and, and then uh if you take too long or or use too many times of uh your flippers trying to hit it uh you're gonna run out of bullets and then you won't get the 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 skill shot, but that's one of the things on here that you have to do that enough time, uh, times uh, to clear uh, to clear that in order to, to, to clear the game, if you will. So I'm gonna try going into another mode now. Ah, uh, my favorite from Halloween Three. I love this. All right, whoa. <laughs> All right, so the idea is you're supposed to hit that shamrock target, you know, expose that and hit it. So what I did was I added the, 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 the pumpkin flashing to the game room. But watch this, guys. Watch this new effect I added here. Yes, blood in the room, but now I animated blood coming down the play field. Yes, during the score drain. So if you don't, you know, hit the target in time, you keep losing your score, and then eventually it goes away, you know. So I don't know. I, I originally had just the play field changed to a bloody texture, but I always wanted to make that more of an animated effect. So that's one of the new things for uh, this update uh, was adding that in there. So I, I thought that was fun, you know. I, I like that kind of stuff. So the, the mode has not been cleared. So let's try going back up. Okay, so we're going to do it again. All right, so the idea is you have to expose that sh silver shamrock target and then you have to hit it before time runs out and there you go all right so you can see that's been lit up now so let's go to well actually here let's just uh, get Hadfield cleared and then you get yeah you get the police assist ball savers 
And if you do Haddonfield enough times... Now, if you go and do uh, Orbits quick enough, you can actually get uh, combos like that. So that, you know, and th those light up near the, the flippers. Again, guys, you know, when you're, when you're playing this normally, it's way more fun and cool. But, you know, like, that's not what this video is about. You know, I'm not... You know, it, it's it's hard to do a really good gameplay demo video while showing the entire game without making a video that's going to take forever. And, you know, I, I'm just not interested in that. So, yeah, that's why I do this. All right. So, now we got Boogie Man. So, this is, what, this is one of the modes that was not originally uh, finished uh, on the only version that Slam released. So, I went in and... Uh, did a various, you know, fixes and updates and whatnot, but this is one of the ones that I, I, I compl made it completable. It's not the same as Slam's newest update, which has more stuff to it, but, you know, so all you got to do here is you just got to hit all these micro targets. But if you fall out of this upper play field, then the mode's instantly over. So uh, that's one thing that, you know, uh, Slam's newer version uh, is, is very different. Uh, he has more going on after, I, th I think. So if you hit all these, now you have to actually escape. The green arrow on the upper left tells you to escape. And you cheat. <laughs> and there you go. You escape. So there you go. We have everything highlighted. So there's actually one more mode we have to do. So I'm going to, you know, kill my ball and then do that. Just so you can see what shows up. What do you think he's going to do with that? All right, so again, skill shot. You have to hit this micro target enough times. So I actually did get him, but I hit another target. I'm using the ball roller. That's why it looked like I missed. But see, if you actually hit him, then it shows as a skill shot. And if you just keep doing that, and therefore we, we cleared the mode. And now everything was lit up in the center uh, uh, inserts there. And then I added this in just to give you something to show that, hey, you completed all those modes. The game's completed. Michael's dead. Just like Halloween 2, you know. And I know the newer movies ignore this altogether, but whatever. You know, I threw it in there to give you some sense of accomplishment so that way, you know, you guys have something to say, hey, I completed this, yay, you know. And Yeah, and that's all there is to it, man. You know? So... Yeah, that's basically uh, this this game in a nutshell. <laughs> you know, it's way more fun when you're actually playing it. It, it can be a tough game, but uh, I will tell you guys though that uh, with the the physics physics on here, it plays so much better than it used to with the older Future Pinball physics. It's like a night and day difference. And and the nice thing is you guys can now you know change the physics to your liking. You don't have to just take it the way I, I've done it. You know, like I, I've added extra physics profiles that you can change to for more bouncier flippers. Uh, but you can make any settings changes you want. You know, it, it's, it's not quite as hard as you think it is. Uh, you know, just enable the physics uh, tweaker. And I tell you how to do that in the install instructions uh, that I include with the table. You know, and then play around with the settings to see what you do or don't like. You know, and then... Add those settings to uh, the table script afterwards, you know, and then you can have yourself uh, the table play exactly the way you want. Like, you know, like, you got micro flips, you can still do post passes, you got live uh, catches, drop catches. Ah, but man, it's tough, you know. I left that post in the bottom there because, man, without that, I, I don't know, this table would just be too damn hard, man. Oh, and that's one thing I did change, too, is uh, those flippers up top are actually not the, the ones that were originally on there. Uh, they're a little bit bigger. I added those in uh, because uh, for, oh, they, see that alley pass there? Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I added that in there because, uh, or added those bigger flippers because uh, I, I don't like those small flippers on almost any table. I really hate them, to be honest, you know, and I, I made sort of like mid-size flippers that are just a little bit bigger and I just find they play a lot better. It makes it more fun. Uh, that's my own personal add-on and preference, uh, you know, to each their own. Uh, but yeah, man, like, yeah, so uh, it's a fun table. It, it, it's, it's a hard table, but it's a fun table. And uh, with all the, you know, the pen event updates and uh, the fleet sounds are so amazing. Uh, full SSF, uh, full DOF lighting and feedback, you know. 
uh, yeah, man, like, it's, it's just a great table all around. I prayed that he would burn in hell. And there you go. Utterly fantastic! And there you go. We got the, the, the Halloween Big Bloody Mike Halloween. mod now with Pit Event V2 and all these other fun add-ons. Uh, again, it's not going to have all of Slam's newest uh, updates to it, but you know I wanted to update the Big Bloody Mike mod and get it out there with uh, the latest and greatest and uh, then add my own flair to it like I like to do. You know, it just, I do this stuff, you know, what can I say, guys? I do this stuff for fun. I, you know, it's fun for me. I do it for my own personal enjoyment, for what I like to see or have in the table, and then I just share it for everyone else to enjoy. You know, like you know, this is a this hobby. What can we say? Uh, we all, all of us, anyone who makes anything on uh, uh, in this hobby, whether it's creating your own table completely, or modding a table, or you know, doing pup updates, anything. Like we're all proud of what we create in this hobby and sometimes we can get defensive about it you know uh and unfortunately with this table that you know there was a bit of drama that came out you know because i held off releasing this for halloween on purpose uh because once i saw the visual pinball table that was coming out of halloween uh, i saw that it used the medusa layout as a starting point and i i know that you know that table was in uh you know was being worked on years ago uh, I was like, oh, great. You know, people are going to compare one table to another and they're going to say, hey, you know, someone would, you know, someone's going to say, hey, you know, you copied ideas or something like that, you know, and I'm like, oh, great. You know, I don't want that to happen. I, I wanted the visual pinball table to just be left alone to, you know, be, you know, its own release and not be compared to this table at all. You know, yeah, they both started with uh, Medusa. But, and they both have the same theme, but man, like Slam's table and the visual pinball table are completely different in every other aspect. They're so different, you know, so you can't really compare them. It's happened before where two people use the same starting point, the same basic table layout from a real table, and then they make their own table based on a similar theme. It happens, happened before, happened in this case, it's gonna happen again, you know, no, uh, you know, no one caught i don't think anyone copied ideas from anybody you know like it, it just it happens and you know things were said you know from you know from multiple people that shouldn't have been said you know and bottom line is guys you know it's a great hobby and you know it's a great theme and you know we got two fantastic tables out of it uh or well three uh, technically if you want to include slam's latest update you know but i don't know if he'll ever release any new updates uh so this is my update to the Big Bloody Mike mod, and uh, you know, I, I hope you enjoy all the latest uh, updates and uh, the newer physics and Pin Event V2 uh, features I've added to it, and the newer lighting and other stuff. You know, this is just what I like for myself. You know, I do this stuff for my own fun. I don't do this, you know. Uh, there's a few bitter people out, out there, man. That you know, that, I, don't, I don't know why, but you know, they just they think, you know, p people like me or others do things as a way of trying to one-up someone or, you know, like say, ha, look what I can do that you can't do. Or, hey, you know, yeah, my stuff is better than yours. And it, it, it's not that at all, man. We all freaking learn from each other. Everyone who's made anything in this hobby has either learned from someone else, has uh, benefited from, you know, seeing their examples on other tables or has actually used resources from their tables. And that's everyone. I don't care who you are. I don't care how much of a table you've made from scratch, you've still benefited from other people, whether by examples or by actual assets. It could be the table models for the bumpers, the flippers, uh, you know, drop targets or rub rubbers or spotlights or who knows what, you know, like, or it could be from table script code examples that you're using. It could be from DOF examples, like, you know, like none of, none of us, you know, are alone in this guys you know we're in this hobby together and you know we gotta stop this you know uh i don't know we get we just gotta stop this man like we, we we're all proud of our work everyone should be proud of our work we should try to be respectful of each other and you know and then try to uh, be less defensive in our remarks you know like we all get heated and things get said that shouldn't need to be said and you know it sucks all around because it ruins the fun for everyone and you know so that's 
that was my intention of holding this table off, you know, a little bit longer than, you know, it would have been. I wanted to have it up for Halloween, but, you know, uh, unfortunately drama ensued and it happens. There's only so much you can do, but, you know, my intentions were good and uh, I, I, you know, I didn't want to see that happen then. So in the end, guys, you have an awesome visual pinball table of Halloween you can play. And you've got, uh, you know, the, the, an awesome future pinball table that you can play. You know, it, it's, that's the bottom line. And, uh, yeah, I've kind of went on a long time in this video and went into a little bit of a, you know, a dramatic rant, you know. But, uh, so, yeah, this, is, this should be out very soon, guys. Uh, uh, after this, it's probably going to be updating F14, uh, uh, the, my previous pin event. Uh, afterburner mod that I did uh, so I'm gonna be updating that and then after that I'm most likely gonna be starting up back on Silent Hill uh, you know I don't know if I'm gonna do the, the first retro flare table for a pin event v2 update because I'm just gonna be doing retro flare 2 anyway you know so we'll wait and see but that's my intention is to get f14 done and then most likely going back to Silent Hill and working on that and then when that's done getting retro flare 2 done and you know, once I start work on Silent Hill, I, yeah, that's going to be the last release for me for a while because that's going to be a long time and a lot of work. And then, you know, we'll see how it goes from there. So no more talking for me, guys. I've gone on way too long. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoy everyone's work out there in this hobby. You know, uh, let's just have fun and let's just be respectful, guys. You know, we're in this together. Let, 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 let's, uh, let's have fun. And that's what this is supposed to be about. If you're not having fun, then, you know, it's not worth doing, you know, so let's make it fun for everyone. See you later, guys.